All right, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, it's very uh, very happy moment for uh, for us to be for me for us to be here at the opening of the Lofi UK station. It's been uh, it's been ten years since I was involved in Lofi. It's been five years since we've been trying to get the money together to build the station. And only well less than a year ago, this was just an empty field, and now it's graced by this beautiful piece of architecture, which is a Lofi station. So I'm very very happy at this moment. Um, at this moment, I will hand over to Dame Jocelyn Bell Vernell, who's going to say a few words and then cut the ribbon in a most ceremonial manner. <laughs> Thank you very much. I too am very pleased to be here. I'm very glad that the UK is at last going back to low frequencies. It's been a long time since we worked at these frequencies because we've been pursuing better angular resolution. And we've left a lot of stones unturned in that pursuit. So it's really, really good that we're back at these kinds of frequencies. I'm also very happy that we're collaborating with European colleagues and extending significantly the reach of LOFAR. It gives us buy-in to a superb project and it helps the project itself. So it's truly win-win. I realise that the Netherlands establishment was opened by the Queen of the Netherlands. <laughs> I can't quite do that, but in a similar manner as I wield the scissors and formally open it, may I wish all who work with this array every success and lots of stimulation and fun. My Go in, no far. Lift the ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> to roam, Derek? Oh, you're all allowed to roam for a little bit. Are we allowed to pet the So you're allowed to roam and Aris is going to tell us something about uh, some pulsar data which are coming in um, right Somebody now. Somebody opened the, the door. Shall I open it? Derek? Oh, is it? What if I get too close to an LVA? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No So that's not normally there, that's there especially for, for us today. <laughs> Unless that's not obvious yeah. to everyone. <laughs> this, uh, this is an observation of one of the brightest pulsars in the sky, 0329 plus 54, that we took on uh, Thursday night, and it's playing from a DVD that we made. And uh, it's taken with that array over there at a frequency of 150 megahertz, a bandwidth of 6 megahertz, and the little spikes that you see there, you see once every 700 milliseconds or so, which is the rotational period of the pulsar. The pulsar has a little beam that sweeps past this array, and every time the beam is bright, you see a big spike over there. We've actually piped that to, a, to an audio stream so that you can hear it and makes a little bit more of an impression. You can see the, uh, the little um, anomalies in the time series there come from the uh, radio interference uh, in the region, but it's not too terrible for this observation. And um, as you can see also the pulsar is sort of coming and going, which was one of the main problems that I guess uh, you had, Jocelyn, when you discovered the first pulsar. It was a bit harder to confirm. Basically this is real data coming from that array. Uh, yeah, so later on when, when we go back inside we've got a, uh, a laptop that's actually connected to uh, a server that's pr real-time processing the data that's coming from now. We've got uh, a tiny beam of that array pointing as an upper pulsar and when we go back inside you'll be able hopefully to see live pulses from pulsar as, as we it's live data coming from a brand new LOFA station, and it's a tiny little pulsar turning somewhere in the galaxy. The really cool thing about this is that um, you see a real-time stream here, and in order to get something like this, you need to process pulsar data a little bit. Um, pulsar data, or, uh, pulsar light is dispersed as it goes through the uh, interstellar medium, and in order to to get a bright, narrow spike like that, you actually need to remove the effect of the interstellar <coughs> medium. And we're doing this real time at the moment by using a bunch of uh, graphics cards attached to the server that's doing the processing. 
So these graphics cards are de-dispersing real time and then pumping out the signal over a stream to my laptop over here, and the laptop is displaying it. So it's, um, I think it's pretty amazing <coughs> that we can do this two weeks after the station has been uh, started. 